if you don't take a driver and let the shaft end the game, if you get ahead of everything or try to flex the shaft. I mean, one of the things I found in working with this concept is when you swing a golf club around planes and arcs and you think about the target line, you will come over the top of the ball. Every, I mean, that, that's one of the biggest things in the whole teachings, is, but thinking. mentally, if you're, you know, once you turn away from the golf club and you're aimed out to the right, and you think of swinging the club along the target line, you're going over you're down. You're going over and down. Right. Where, and so the most power and accuracy that you can create in a golf swing is allowing that thing to swing free under, up, and out like this. And, uh, and once you've got the club in the positions, which we just explained, you can control that blade. Yes. See? What I see now that you're getting the right back up in the plane of the upper body, which is very good. Then you have to swing it from where it stopped at the top. You can't move it forward. How does that? How does that? Like how does it? How do you put that in your swing? Well, you, it's just like you just let it go down. Let it. Now, to a great extent, the shifting of weight in a golf swing is an optical and physical illusion. As we see Worsham at the top of the backswing here. The right foot is supporting more of his weight than the left. Now the weight shifts to the left foot as he swings through. But a great deal of this is appearance rather than fact. 